If you're new here, we're building a better way to interact with your database. A single beautiful desktop app where you can write and manage queries, build dashboards, and create workflows all in one place. That's the vision behind DB Pro, to make working with data not just powerful, but genuinely enjoyable. Now, if you caught the first video, you'll remember that we started right at the beginning. We talked about the idea for DB Pro, how the name came about, the design, the logo, even the stack we chose, and how we were planning to build it. That was the start of this journey, setting the foundation for everything that's coming next. So last month, we wrapped up the first video, uploaded it to YouTube, and waited. Likes started climbing. Comments started pouring in and people were actually watching it. Then the next morning, I checked YouTube Studio and I was honestly blown away by the figures. Every refresh, there was more views, more comments and more people joining the DB Pro waitlist. By day two, we had messages coming in on Discord, people saying how much they wanted a tool like this, sharing their ideas and offering feedback. I <laughs> honestly, couldn't believe it. It just kept going. Over the next 72 hours, the numbers did not stop. For our first video, at this time of recording, we have over 1,400 views, 30 comments, 65 likes, and a total of 23 people who have joined our waitlist. We went from 132 subscribers to 213 from a single video. For us, that's just huge. I mean, it's not just numbers, it's validation that people actually want what we're building. So to everyone who's watched, liked, commented, joined the Discord or signed up to the waitlist, thank you. Seriously, you made this real. This wouldn't be possible without you guys tuning in and liking, subscribing and commenting on the video. So thank you again. After the first video went live, we jumped straight back into building. Motivation to build the best database app was higher than ever. We had a working foundation, but the UI still needed a lot of love. At this stage, DB Pro could connect to a database, pull in tables and show the structure, but it didn't feel great yet. The layout was a bit clunky, spacing was off, and the design just wasn't living up to what we had in mind. So the goal for this week was simple. Finish off and refine the UI, ready to start hooking it up to a real database connection in build week number four. A lot of you were asking about the UI of DB Pro, which meant we were obviously onto something. So I figured I'd give you all a deeper dive into the UI and what we think makes DB Pro feel different to the rest of the apps out there. This is the main layout of DB Pro's data view and it's where you'll probably spend most of your time. On the left, you've got your navigation panel. It's simple, clean and pretty much gets out of the way. You can switch between schemas, browse tables within those schemas, and quickly change your database connection or user all from one side panel. It's built for speed. Everything is exactly where you'd expect it to be. There's no wasted clicks. The middle panel is where you'll do the actual work. This is your data view. Rows, columns, the stuff that matters. We've kept it completely uncluttered so you can focus on what you're here for, your data. There's no extra Chrome, there's no unnecessary borders, there's no clutter. It's just clean, fast, readable data. And then on the right, we've got what we're calling the inspector. This is context aware, so it changes depending on what you're doing in the middle panel. For example, when you select a row, the inspector shows you the data in a vertical field view, which by the way, I absolutely love. It's just so much easier to read a record that way from top to bottom. I feel like it's how we naturally scan information. 
Or if you prefer, you can switch to a JSON view, which is perfect for developers. The inspector is basically a power panel. You can inspect rows, view JSON, and eventually even edit the data right there without leaving the context of what you're working on. It's one of those small details that makes the whole experience feel faster, tighter, and just more modern. The next part I really wanted to nail was the data grid itself. So the table in DB Pro works kind of like a regular database table, but it's crossed with a spreadsheet. I've always loved how flexible spreadsheets are. You can drag, select, and copy data just so quickly. You don't even have to think, you just do it. And I wanted to bring some of that feeling of fluidity into DB Pro. So that's exactly what we did. You can left click a single cell and then right click to copy its contents. You can command click or control click depending on what operating system you're on to select multiple cells. You can click and drag to select a whole region or even mix the two together. You can drag a few and then add more with a command or control click. It just feels so natural that it just doesn't fight you and it just doesn't get in the way. It just kind of works the way you'd expect it to. It feels really fast, intuitive and familiar, but it's kind of been built for real database data instead of just a spreadsheet file. And that combination, I think, is where DB Pro really starts to come alive. One thing we've really tried to do with DB Pro is to sweat the small stuff. A lot of the comments on the first video mentioned the UX and how impressed they were with it, which was honestly amazing to see because the UX is exactly where we've been putting most of our effort. The goal with DB Pro is to build a product that just gets out of your way. It's something that feels effortless, where everything just flows. So let me show you a few of the little details that we've been working on. For example, when you double click to edit a cell in line and you start typing, once the text goes beyond the width of the cell, it automatically pops open into a larger in. This sounds really small, but it's just such a nice touch. You can actually see what you're typing without the cell cutting you off. You can also select multiple rows and instantly compare them side by side in the inspector. Or you can copy and paste them as a JSON array. Again, it's a little thing, but it saves so much time when you're debugging or trying to move data around. And then when you create a sort, you can actually rearrange the sort order with these little arrow buttons. The sort animates and swaps around so you can see exactly what's changed. It kind of feels alive and it gives you that instant visual feedback that makes the whole experience more enjoyable. It's all of these little things that when added up just make the app feel so smooth. After build week three, we switched gears a bit and focused on marketing. Marketing week three was all about tightening things up, getting the Discord in shape now that we have you guys joining it, updating the roadmap, and replying to everyone who's been supporting the project. So first up was the Discord. I wanted to get it looking good and running properly. So I converted it to a community server, uh, added a few new channels, a proper welcome channel for new members, an announcement channel, that sort of thing. All of that was actually suggested by a user in our Discord server called Tensai, so shout out to them for the idea. We're now up to 11 people in the Discord, and some of you have already started giving feedback and ideas, which has been really cool to see. If you haven't yet joined, come and hang out. The Discord link's down in the description below. Next, I updated the roadmap on the website to reflect everything we got done in build week number three. All the UI improvements, the data grid changes, the inspector updates. It's kind of nice seeing it all starting to fill out. And finally, 
You might have already noticed this, but we decided to rebrand the whole YouTube channel, this channel. It was originally called Hypership, and we've now decided to demonstrate our dedication to DB Pro by renaming and rebranding this whole channel to DB Pro. I went through and replied to all the YouTube comments for the first video, and there was just so many good ones. People sharing ideas, feedback, or just saying they're excited to see where this goes. It honestly means so much to us. Every comment gives us more motivation to just keep pushing this forward. After marketing week, it was straight back into build week four. By this point, the UI was kind of almost there. It was clean, it was consistent, and it was starting to feel really solid. Just to show you, this is what it looked like at the end of the last video. And this is what the UI looks like now. It was finally time to hook everything up to a real database. And this is where things started to get really fun. We began wiring up all the functionality behind the scenes, creating tables, pulling real data, the stuff that makes DB Pro actually work. But of course, as soon as you start connecting to live data, you really start to find bottlenecks and issues. And we hit a pretty big one. It was the classic N plus one problem. If you haven't come across it before, the N plus one problem happens when you make one query to fetch a list of things, let's say your tables, and then you make another query for each of those items. So instead of one clean query, you're suddenly making hundreds of queries. It's one of those sneaky issues that makes everything look fine, but it secretly slows your app to a crawl. In our case, we were fetching the list of schemas, then for each schema, we were fetching all the tables, and then for each table, we were fetching all the columns. So you can imagine in a database with hundreds of tables, that's a lot of queries. So we rewrote the logic to grab everything in bulk, the schemas, the tables and columns, all in one go. And the difference was insane. We went from about 3.5 seconds down to 85 milliseconds. That is a 40 times speed improvement. And to be honest, it completely transformed how fast TB Pro felt. You just click, sync, and boom, everything's there instantly. It's such a good feeling when you spot something like that and fix it properly. Next, we had an idea for how to handle table management inside DB Pro. Now, if you're anything like us, you've probably inherited a database at some point with hundreds of tables, all with random names, that kind of half-finished experiments, filled with test data, uh, and even a few that no one dares touch because no one remembers what they do anymore. Yeah, we've all been there. So we wanted to bring a bit of structure to that chaos. One feature we're really proud of is table tagging. It sounds so simple and it just completely changes how you navigate your database. You can tag tables however you like, maybe by feature, by client, by project, or even by environment. So instead of scrolling endlessly through an A to Z list, you can just switch to your reports tag or an analytics tag, or really whatever makes sense for your workflow. I've actually been living in this view all week and I already prefer it to the standard alphabetical layout. It's just so much faster to what I need and it kind of makes DB Pro feel like such a well thought out organized app already. So here's how it works. You can create a new tag right inside DB Pro you give it a name, pick a color, and that's it. You save it and it's ready to go. Uh, from there, you can just start assigning tables to that tag. It's literally as simple as right-clicking a table and selecting the tag you want. And the nice thing is, tables can exist in multiple tags. So if a table is part of your analytics tag, it can also be used by the billing tag. 
so you can tag it under both. There's no duplicates, there's no weird folder structures, it's just clean, flexible organization that fits how you do your work. It's one of those features that sounds really small and kind of obvious, but once you start using it, it's hard to imagine going back. I've honestly found myself tagging everything and the moment you do, your whole database just feels way more structured without needing to change the names of tables that might break something. You start seeing patterns as well. You can spot old tables that you don't need anymore that might remain in the untagged tag. It just makes sense. So that wraps up build week four. And honestly, things are starting to come together. The app is feeling fast, clean, and it's finally starting to look like the vision we had at the start. And really, we've only been on this for, well, four build weeks. It's kind of crazy to think that. Next month, the plan is to completely finish hooking up DB Pro to a real database, uh, every part of it. So saving, editing, creating tables, all of it running live. Once that's solid, we'll move on to one of the biggest features yet, querying. Actually writing and running SQL queries inside DB Pro. That is where things are going to start getting really interesting. We're really excited because we're getting that much closer to launching the first version of DB Pro. If we keep going at this pace, we could honestly have a V1 out just before Christmas, which would be a really nice Christmas present, not just for us, but to uh, everyone who's interested in DB Pro, to you guys. Thank you again so much for watching and for all the support so far. If you'd like to help us out, please consider subscribing to this channel. It honestly makes the biggest difference to us. And if you've got ideas or things you'd love to see in a database app like DB Pro, please just drop them in the comments below. We read every single one and we make an effort to reply to all of them. Thanks again for being part of this journey and we'll see you in the next one.